Hey everybody, hey traders, Chris Pulver here. It is 4.26 p.m. Eastern Time on the 18th of September. Uh, doing a little video recap post-Fed. Uh, lots of drama, lots of anticipation. Ultimately ended up being a bunch of noise. Uh, all the real excitement happened right at 2 p.m. And I can show you that right here. Here's the one minute time frame on the SPX or the SPY or any index for that matter. And you can see that it was a nothing burger all day and then rip fade fake out chop uh, the market did end up breaking the spx lows ended up retesting the lows for the day tomorrow's a new day i do wonder if there's follow through but let me go to the spy you can see the same thing you can see the movement right at 2 p.m when the fed announced their cut they did cut by 50 basis points today uh was it a surprise kind of but not really I mean, the, the CME Fed watch tool showed 50 basis points, even though it was all over the place the last couple of weeks. It ultimately settled today, showing about a 55% probability, and it was correct. So right now we have the Fed. Fed was at 5.25 to 5.50%. Fed now at 4.75 to 5.0%. And likely, we will see additional cuts in november and december but how many bps we don't know so i think right now the fed gets started with a 50 basis points cut for a couple of reasons now i was not in this camp a couple weeks ago as i thought man if they do 50 basis points and everyone's calling for this emergency cut and they need to cut 75 basis points right now i was thinking that is clearly showing the market that you are wrong that you miscalculated that you're way behind the curve but over the last couple of weeks, I did change my opinion. And I thought, if they cut by 50 basis points now, that does give them a little bit of cushion for the next 30 to 45 days until they have their next Fed meeting, which is two days after the U.S. election. So from now, September 18th, until Wednesday, November 7th, the next Fed meeting, we're going to have another round of employment data. We're going to have another round of inflation data. And we're also going to have earnings season kickoff for Q3. So that's going to show us Q3 earnings kicking off in Q4. What are financials saying? What's the forward guidance? What's the earnings looking like? You know, how's revenue overall? If consensus is good, maybe that's enough of a catalyst to help keep the market afloat. Um, if it's not, maybe it's not. But ultimately, a lot of this 25, 50 basis point stuff was priced in in a big way. You can see the resiliency in the market the last couple of months. I mean, think about August, for example. Uh, let me take this back to a five-minute chart here. Let's go to the SPY. Let's go to, I mean, the SPY, there's anything. Uh, this, you know, clearly uh, ripped to the downside, nearly a 10% drop in the S&P, coming all the way back up to test the highs in August. The post-Labor Day sell-off comes right back to the highs with CPI coming in at 2.5. We're right back to the highs again. The market gets to celebrate all-time highs, but today's price action suggests that we might be putting in a near-term top. Now, all I'm doing is playing some volatility. Um, I don't care if the market goes up or down. I just hope over the next couple of weeks, if we get enough volatility to go back down to these post-September sell-off levels, I can make some nice profit there. If somehow it's a noisy day, but the market justifies trying to get to the highs again and melting up higher, I think we're kind of slow and limited to the upside, but it could still get there. I don't know. But based on today's close, who knows? We're sitting here at the highs. Uh, we're going to see what tomorrow's pre-market looks like. I do expect the floodgates to open up with a little bit more positioning and volatility. Uh, maybe it's good to take some profit. Maybe it's good to be hedged. I'm kind of all the above. Um, so anyway, this is the spy. I'm looking to see if we go up or down. I need about $9.60 a movement on an instrument that should be capable of giving me about, I don't need 30. That's the monthly. Let me go to the weekly here. So I'm looking at a weekly expected move of around $15 and I need $9.60 to make some money. Um, I go to the queues. You can see right here, our average move for the week is about $19.18. I need $11.50 to make some money. Uh, the other one that I put the trade on is NVIDIA, uh, just because I thought, you know, this is kind of representing the semiconductor space. This is representing AI. This has been one of the more hype trades of the year that's carried us through MAG7 into 2023 and this year with AI into 2024. Uh, my price in the center is about $116.50. Uh, we're looking at an average weekly move of around $12.93, and I need about $8.45 to make some money. So between those vol plays, whether it's up or down, it doesn't matter, but I'm looking to see can these levels get hit with some volatility in the coming weeks. 
Uh, the Fed funds rate, you can see right here, it's still showing 5.3. This is going to change. Uh, this should be showing by tomorrow. Uh, this should be showing that cut down about 50 basis points to around 4.8 or so. Uh, we're still sitting with a disinverted yield curve between the 10 and the 2, 3.7, 3.62. Uh, mortgage rates are likely going to show some improvements, uh, hopefully by, you know, I would hope 50 basis points. And so maybe this prints around 5.7 in the next 30 to 60 days. Uh, and then, of course, we find out there's more to come from the Fed for November and December. Uh, the markets are anticipating this is this is also pretty wild and crazy. If I go up to the spy for a second, type up a little summary, the markets and this would be the CME uh, Fed watch tool. OK, markets are anticipating 10 cuts in 11 FOMC meetings. That is a pretty consistent all uh, even even you could say an aggressive rate cut cycle um, now we don't know if it's going to be 25 basis points every single time and the fed's super consistent or if they start taking bigger leaps and we get another 50 basis points cut uh, but what is interesting is i wouldn't necessarily say that the fed is being easy i don't think the fed is being super dovish i don't think they're easy necessarily i think what the fed is doing is they're trying to normalize um that means this Okay, with the rate, so we now sit at a 4.75 to 5% official cash rate from the Fed, and we currently have a PCE that the last print was around 2.6%, or maybe even 2.5%, and we also have CPI at 2.5%, and we also have the two-year, the two-year sitting at 3.6%. So just based on this number, the Fed is still considered restrictive with monetary policy and so what today finally opened up is they're acknowledging that we are restrictive things have fallen in line inflation has been pseudo tamed and now we're focused on employment that is the fed's dual mandate we want employment we want price stability we want to make sure we manage inflation it's trending lower and that like all these things are being listed today when Powell's talking and that's why i said i do think it was a bit of a taste of a victory lap but it's still way too early to say that the fed figured it all out now this does keep the market a little bit excited. I think the timing of this is certainly better than waiting. I think the market timing is better than you know only doing 25 basis points today because what we still have is as we have more employment news, right? And that's going to include another round of ADP non-farm. That's going to include non-farm. That's going to include unemployment claims every week. Those are weekly. That's going to include average hourly earnings. That's going to include labor participation, right? That's going to include the unemployment rate, which has been steadily rising from 3.4 to 4.3. Now the Fed with their dot plot today showed around uh, their, their expectations, not dot plot, but just the, uh, the, the Fed projections. They're looking at about a 4.4% unemployment rate by the end of the year. Now we're already at 4.3. So that means they're saying we're only getting worse by one-tenth of 1%. Now, is that happening now in the next print? Is that happening through the course of the year? I'm not sure, but that's a lot of employment news for the market to digest until we have the next Fed meeting. We also have more inflation news. So we have another round of CPI, another round of PPI, another round of PCE, and we will see what those prints are. They have been trending lower, yes. Um, oil was a big factor to that. Shelter is also a lagging indicator that's coming down. So if shelter continues to trend lower and oil has been down 20 plus percent, that was a major, major contributor to lower inflation, food prices as well. But these will still print. Now, are we going to see a significantly lower print in inflation or is it going to remain somewhat sticky? I don't know. But this is all the news that we get to digest and the Fed gets to evaluate as they come into the November rate decision. Now, that timing like I said, is November 7th, two days after the election. I wouldn't be surprised if the market is giving us a lot of indecision until we see good news is good news, bad news is bad news. How does the market take it all in? Expect some volatility. I'm planning for some volatility. I don't know what's going to happen, right? I don't know if the market's going to rip to all-time highs again or we're going to fade all the way back down to post uh, Labor Day sell-off lows or all the way down to August 5th lows. But I will say this, if we come back down to this level, I'm probably taking a stab at that buy trade. If we come back down to this area, I'm taking a stab at that buy trade. To where? Back to the highs and hopefully looking to see if we can break all-time highs once again for a, a late Q4 rally, You know, maybe November post-election, maybe through the holidays into December, into the new year. 
uh, maybe as we kick off Q1. But if I can buy it low enough, I'm going to try to participate there. And of course, I'll be hedged by necessity and I'll make sure that I'm trying to protect some downside. But uh, at this point, I'm just trading every kind of two to three weeks out, trading some both direction volatility and uh, playing some hedges in the futures market, trying to collect some income on silver and gold, uh, still dollar cost averaging into oil, dollar cost averaging into Bitcoin. Uh, stock wise individually, I've got some plays on Pfizer this week. I've got some plays on FXI. China has been turning around pretty nicely. We had some big moves, uh, on Alibaba and Baidu. I'll show that right here. So Alibaba on the daily time frame. Oops. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. So we're back up towards, uh, 80. I mean, we're back up towards 84 and change on Alibaba. Uh, we are back up a little bit on Baidu, which has been down in a big way, but we bounced off nicely off these lows, a slightly higher low, by the way, right around $80 and, and change almost uh, just below $81. We're back up towards 84, 81. Uh, I'd obviously like to see a higher high and somehow we have this high, this high, this high. If Alibaba can break a little bit higher to me, that shows that we may be turning the corner and all this anticipation and all this narrowing will hopefully start getting some bigger signs to the upside. So I'm going to zoom way out on Alibaba. I've been pretty vocal about this stock for a while. I still think we can test the lows again, and I'm totally prepared for that, but I'm looking for this as a major support level. And all of this hopefully is accumulation. And once we start to see this area bottom out, I would love to be long and getting long pseudo aggressively uh, to see if we can base here around like $80 or so, and then make a price target at 150 to 160. If this is a true double bottom, we can also double that move to the upside and get this thing into, you know, almost $300. That's a big if, and I don't know if that's going to happen, but if I can get this trade to come to fruition, I'd be pretty happy with that. So I'm still watching ba uh, Baidu and Baba. Uh, closely with FXI, some K-Web, that's, that's pretty much it for my China exposure. U.S. market-wise, you know, we're sitting near the highs. The Russell had a really, uh, what, what I thought was going to be a great day today, but you can see that it quickly faded all the way back down. Uh, this was up around 2 plus percent during the FOMC announcement, and it quickly faded all the way back down. So here is the quick read on the one-minute time frame. So there's your, you know, initial knee-jerk reaction and faded all the way back down to the SPY. Here's your cues. The cues actually took out the lows as you can see here. So initial knee jerk all the way back down to the lows. The Dow back down to the lows and then some. The Russell all the way back down to the lows. Not quite breaking the lows, but man, what a crazy volatile day. Uh, that swing all the way up around 2.9% and faded all the way back to finish pretty much flat for the day at 0 0.02. So I guess you could say a lot of noise, a lot of chop. Tomorrow's a new day. If the floodgates are going to open for volatility, I do wonder where we are going. You know, the SPY certainly looks a little bit toppy with that fake out at the highs, and we could certainly come back down. It may not happen tomorrow. It may be an indecisive day. I don't know, but I will be watching very closely because I'm looking to see, can I get some volatility and some direction one way or the other and trade the SPY to make some profit, trade the Qs, trade NVIDIA, uh, maybe trade some other things. Gold had a nice little fake out today as well. It topped out with fresh highs and then pulled back. Uh, the dollar also had what looked to be a bit of a, bull uh, a bear trap to the downside and pushed back up. Um, I still think the dollar is is likely heading lower, but I'm just not convinced that now is the time to sell the lows. Um, if we have some indecision, don't be surprised that the dollar plays with our trades and emotions a little bit uh, until the dollar gets faded later or even has a chance to poke up here, find some more resistance before the dollar turns and see if we get a late Q4 rally uh, to send stocks and assets higher. That would be correlated with a weaker dollar. So a uh, lot of noise. That's really the summary for today. But the nice thing is it's offering some relief to small businesses, offering some relief to consumers. Uh, I think we're going to start to see some housing activity, maybe some repurchasing, uh, maybe some debt restructuring, maybe some loans, maybe some whatever. This is good for the consumer for right now. So that's a bit of a Main Street, a Main Street boost. Uh, we'll see what Wall Street wants to do with it. I think there's going to be some chop, but I'm playing it both ways just in case. And off we go. So that's it for me. Hope you had a great day. Uh, so far, having a good week. And I'll see you in the live markets. Take care. Bye.